So, good morning. I've been sitting here a little while time. Just making sure I have everything on. Um, This is, this is almost live, guys. Um, I uh, just decided to turn the cameras on. We're not editing out any of the mistakes. Um, as you can see, we are doing this live. We'll be pre-recorded, but I won't edit anything out. Oh, my goodness. So, let's get situated here. What I've been tying this morning are these half barumbas in the olive and cream. I just finished a whole bunch of olive, solid olive. I've got some olive and white to do. There's my cheat sheet. Olive and purple, olive and fluorescent yellow. Uh, olive and natural brown and then olive and cream right now we have to finish up uh, six dozen I'm just filling my inventory boxes for the springtime sales run and let's get situated my goodness walked away from the desk briefly and everything is a mess right now so uh, we're tying nothing, nothing fancy. There's no tinsel. There's no stinger hooks, anything like that. I will be uh, tying a whole bunch of those, but I usually try to get my basic inventory, the jigs that I keep in inventory, the basic colors. Try to get those done first. So that's what we're doing today. So I'm not sure exactly when this video will post. I am. It's kind of odd um, that in, in most people probably don't realize that YouTube videos they could be uh, filmed or videotaped or recorded, whichever terminology you want to use. I'm <laughs> a little bit older. I still say film, right? Um, but often, you know, they're much older than the date that the, the video airs. And that could be for a lot of different reasons. Uh, if I was doing this with my old camera, where I didn't have the benefit of a mixing board, you know, I would I would record on my camera. My audio would be um, on that main camera. I might have a second or third camera that I was using for different angles. I'm trying to edit all that stuff together. It takes a little bit of time. Um, I have simplified my recording. So aside from maybe just clipping out the five minutes that I was letting the please stand by run while I was turning on lights and making sure the microphones are charged and whatnot. Um, you know, I can, I have the picture and picture and all that is all one thing. I can, I can change between cameras, etc. And I do not a whole lot of 
uh, editing, even with regular videos, if I was trying to teach something. So I don't, I don't think this will be out this week, you know, but probably in a couple weeks from this date. We're still in the middle of February. We've had the uh, cold season. We uh, we had that really really cold snap. Actually, was able to get out a couple days ice fishing, and then it warmed right up. Um, a buddy of mine actually took a swim up at Chameau Bay. Not because the ice was too thin, but I guess they had some clown with an airboat. And I would suspect he was probably breaking ice on purpose. Kind of being a jerk. And uh, my buddy, him and his partner, his fishing buddy, they both walked onto a great big slab that was split down the middle. And it, they both kind of went this way, I guess, from you know how he described it. Luckily, they weren't too far from shore, and there was other fishermen out that quickly ran over and uh, didn't lose their gear. I, I think he dropped his uh, spud bar and lost that, but their uh, sleds with all their gear basically just floated fills up with water but they they as long as they don't tip they they float so kind of scary cuz it's you know that's different water far up north uh, the couple days that I was able to get out was on a smaller lake here in central new york in green county and uh, the week the week that I was the weekend I was up there, holy cow the wind. Sometimes you're up there, it's so calm and beautiful, you know, it's fun to ice fish. <laughs> and uh, the weekend I was up, you're just you're hoping that you didn't blow away. So we even had the ice anchors in. Let me turn my face off just for a second. Let's take a look at this jig. There we go. Olive head size A red thread with that cream that cream tail I, don't, I hope it comes out real nice on the uh, video I'll find out when I take a look at it on the bigger screen but on this small monitor it kind of looks white I've mentioned this before, this is the not so glamorous side of jig tying. You know, it's not all, you know, chicks and beer, right? But it's, uh, you know, just the thing we do. Sitting, tying the exact same pattern, the exact same colors over and over and over. Just to build up an inventory so when I do make my runs in the spring to the different stores I can have as much on hand ready to sell as possible and this is what kept me busy a lot of winter times when I was younger you know my father was always tying always had custom orders on the table. He always had his lists and clipboards and everything he needed just to keep track of what he needed to order, what he needed to dye, what he needed to tie up. And we're always tying for the jigs that we need six months in advance you know, I 
same time for what I need in the springtime. And to be honest, I'm a little bit later this season than I probably should be. Um, I should have knocked out 75% of what I'm tying right now. Should have been finished late December, early January at the latest. So I'm about a month behind, per, you know, in, in my personal feeling on how how well I should be doing in preparing. And that's that whole grasshopper and ant story, right? Where if I was sitting down in December more tying, I would have more done ahead of time and I wouldn't be feeling rushed. Though overall, I'm, I'm pretty calm and laid back. I don't feel much rush right now as it is. But this is a popular color. A few years ago, I wasn't tying anything in olive. And over the last... I'd, I'd say three or four seasons come to mind where Olive has just taken off. And I've talked about this before, um, but I know that here in New York State, a lot of it I think we can attribute it to the infestation. <laughs> um or the introduction of gobies into uh, a lot of the lakes here in New York State. I think originally guys were kind of worried um, on the effect that the gobies would have on the walleye in particular uh, fishing. But I think, just like with the uh, zebra mussels, the ecology of a lake, the life, you know, nature has a way of balancing out. So though the zebra mussels really are They're a pain in the ass, is what they are. But, zebra mussels also filter the lake, filter the water, and local lakes haven't been as so clear and clean since I was a kid. But because of the zebra mussels, you know, that's a benefit for an invasive species. And the rest of the lake kind of adapt. You know, so you can correct me if you know a little bit more, but, I, you know, have the, has the walleye fishing really uh, gotten bad because of zebra mussels? here in New York State and I think the same can be said for the goby um, because I think what we're finding is that the predator type fish you know the trout the walleye bass are feeding on the goby And that's why, you know, getting back to the, the color, that's when, you know, we're talking about the tails that we're using, right? The, the patterns that we're tying. That the colors now that are a new popular color, the olives, the olive and natural brown, the olive and cream, olive and white, olive and purple. And I actually tie for a couple guys. I don't. I don't keep it in the inventory. Um, 
showed it to a couple of the, the shops I sell to and they were cold at best <laughs> on, on the, you know, pattern. I don't think I sold any to any of the stores, but olive and blue um, or a light. Two colors. There's there's a there's a just a straight blue. So olive and blue, right? Or olive and a lilac color. A very dull purple. Um, and I think that's why the one customer had me dye these up. And this is the Hope it shows up on the monitor, on the screen here. These are tails that I did. Uh, it's a blue tail, but with the dark, the uh, dark purple uh, tips. So the dark purple that we like to use with the black and purple, especially on the lakes here in central New York State. Um, but this guy was asking for like a, a gradient, a blue with a purple tip. Uh, so that's what I did for that guy. So that with olive, surprisingly. Also, natural brown has been a really... That's always been an okay color. You know, a um, uh, color that was popular. I would tie a sandpike, which is brown and white, with stripes on the hair. But I would tie those with a natural brown. Uh, my dad used to tie for himself personally. It'd be a nice dark dyed brown, the top color, and then the middle color would be a natural brown, and then the bottom color being a natural white. Um, and he would tie that pattern for himself personally. It's a pretty jig, real, you know, you have that gradient from the dark brown down. But I've seen um, like one pattern, and I'll, uh, let's take a look at the clipboard. It's it's a color that I would have in the box, and I would I you know originally tied a dozen dozen right a dozen of twelve, and it sat in the box for a long time. I'd sell one or two each year, but this year have to retie it's the natural brown and black so I, I have 10 on my clipboard here so I've sold 10 dozen but I don't remember tying any in the last couple years so I probably tied or I probably sold um, a couple dozen maybe each year of that uh, color pattern but I suspect because of the goby, because of the, you know, what the fish are keying in on. That's just a color that uh, fishermen are becoming aware of. So this jig has a one aught hook in it, and I'm measuring on my vise the length of the silver part on my jaws here. So I'm aiming just for uh, this rubber gasket that I put here. That's what I'm aiming for in terms of measuring my tail. So each jig, as we do it, comes out identical. I'm still working on the that basic, the basic 
type uh, series that I'm series I guess you can call it but the basic uh, steps in tying a jig still working on those um, the next one will be oh, let's take a look at this jig real quick nice and pretty it's a nice jig um, the next uh, topic I guess will be your position, how you set up, um, you know, the reason why I use a vise that's parallel to the tabletop. Um, even if this vise was adjustable, I would have it uh, parallel to my tabletop. And you might have just saw, seen me kind of shake my chair um, back and forth just a little bit that's trying to center myself in front of the jig. Um, I got up earlier, pushed my chair away from my table. So there is a, ideally I would have the no carpeting in here. I would have a, a tile floor, something nice and smooth. Um, it's easier to clean up hair, you know, just sweeping as opposed to having to vacuum every other day. Um, but it's also easier on the, the wheels that the chair is on. My table is a high workbench, um, and I use a chair that's uh, a draftsman chair, you know, something that's tall and adjustable. But um, I was scooching just a little bit here ago, and uh, that was just to center myself in front of the jig. The... Uh, because it's there's carpet underneath me, you you kind of get a little bit of an indent where your wheels kind of indent themselves into the fabric. I'm just trying to find that find those holes, right? But we're in the process actually. I've got the basement ripped apart. The basement was remodeled before we bought the house, so we've been here almost 20 years. In this house, and uh, it was remodeled probably sometime in the 70s. That were that's what most of the houses in this area. Um, they were they were more than likely built around the 50s, and then uh, you know in the 70s everybody wanted to put a bar in their basement and you know oak paneling and simulated oak paneling right orange carpet all you know the whole nine yards right um so over christmas time my wife looking around and was thinking you know what it's time that we <laughs> that we we uh remodel and fix up that downstairs especially now that the kids are mostly grown. We got grandkid now and daughter number two is, is married, so we got the whole son in law and all that stuff, right? So the house is getting a little bit crowded at holidays. So I got I got the half the basement ripped apart. Trying to update it, remodel it. Take down the hideous oak paneling. And take out the <laughs> take out that stupid nineteen seventies bar. So When I, when I finish that, though, the, the plan is to also get in, into here. You probably see we have that light oak, the golden oak paneling on the wall in here. As you can just see, I just, I, I stopped pulling. There's either a knot or this my thread is broken in the middle that uh, this pack bay 
size A thread is a couple strands that are kind of woven, bra braided together, so to speak, twisted together. All right, they both came through. So, but I just cut that just so I could pull that through without really having to pull on it. It's another video I did just recently. This The exact same thing happened, though you could see my thread as I pulled it through it left one strand on the side towards the head as it was pulling through and you could see how inside the collar the thread from my bobbin one of the strands broke um, and it kind of it twists or get I guess you could say it's a knot um, where it twists itself so as you're pulling it through you can you can feel it catch um, sometimes you can get lucky and if you just pull it through you don't mess up your your collar um, but there is a chance that as if you force it your collar will shift a little bit or the one or two threads from inside the collar will be pulled out of place Forgot to check what time we were starting. I think we started about 10. Which is probably about right. We've tied what? Six jigs as we're sitting here talking. Which is a little slow. That's a question I get every so often. How quickly I can tie. Um, mostly I think I'm asked that question because of my wholesale price and other tires are trying to figure out, you know, how does he, how can he make money <laughs> doing that? So depending on the color, depending on the pattern, um, if I'm sitting here not recording, not messing with the phone, not messing with the computer, either music playing in the background or I just got, you know, like I probably explained before, I have a laptop here that helps me run everything. Um, but I also can just let it play YouTube videos or I like to watch other fly tires, other jig tires, whole bunch of good guys uh, on YouTube. But uh, if I was just tying without any interruptions, I can easily do three, sometimes four dozen an hour. Um, but again, that depends on the pattern. You know, if I'm tying a three color perch pattern, or if I'm doing something like adding tinsel to the to the jig, that slows it down to two to three dozen an hour. But on average, three to four dozen jigs an hour is uh, what I'm able to just sit and do. Uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm concentrating mostly on just filling boxes and I'm sitting here eight to 10 hours a day, you know, that's an awful lot of jigs. Uh, most Saturdays, as an example, I might sit here and tie 10 dozen and maybe I sit here from for six hours. Um, so, and I say ten dozen, three, six, nine, or let's say eighteen dozen. Um, that's what my rack will hold here. Since the top layer, two, four, six of them are filled up, filled with uh, 
already jigs that are tied and odd heads and odds and ends. Um, three, six, nine, ten, twelve. So eighteen dozen. I can fill this rack in a day, and I might sit here for eight hours. Um, which doesn't sound like two or three an hour. Um, but during that time, you know, I'm, I get up, I eat breakfast, I refill my coffee a half a dozen times. I let the dogs out, uh, play on my phone, check the email. Um, what did I do yesterday? Oh, my wife... Uh, moved. Uh, my wife has a room here in the house specifically for her uh, studio uh, for painting and we just recently moved from a smaller bedroom into one of the empty larger bedrooms here in the house and sometimes she'll have reference material on her computer, things that she's scanned in, maybe details of a photo that she's using as a reference or painting. Uh, I don't know, a uh, picture of one of the kids when they were really little, but she has the uh, photo on the computer so she can paint it. And she'll zoom in to certain, like the hand, let's say, as she's painting that part of the painting. And uh, to make it easier, you know, looking at a 15-inch laptop screen isn't the best in terms of trying to see the detail or whatnot. So she uh, asked me to mount a monitor on the wall. So a 20, it might have been a 30-inch monitor. I'm not exactly sure how big it was. But that took a little bit of time, taking down the uh, bracket from the uh, smaller room. And just, you know, tr going into the new room, finding the stud, drilling the holes, zip, 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 and uh, attaching it to the wall. So I say that I, I sat here for seven, eight hours yesterday, but in, in truthful, being truthful in all reality, it was five hours maybe, right? So, you know, if you chain me to the desk, I can't leave, I can't do anything else, I don't get distracted. Three to four dozen an hour is absolutely typical. I'm going to have something neat coming up. I'm going to definitely turn the cameras on. I've tied these in the past for other guys, but it's not something you typically see. They are floating jig heads. And I um, was contacted by a guy who has a specific rig in mind. See, I did that again. On that, um, on that instance, I think what happened, and I'll slow it down if I think about it. Um, if it shows it well, but I think what happened is I might have, as soon as my thread went underneath that collar as I'm pulling it through, I might have let go with my right hand, and when there's slack... on the thread that's going, being pulled underneath the collar. Sometimes it twists or 
you know, it shakes and um, might have had a twist in it. And, and trying to pull it through, it gets stuck. Um, that's, that's what might have happened right there because I, I do think as soon as I, as I was pulling it, as soon as it went under, I, I think I let go. I'm going to, I'll try to show that at the end of this jig. Um, kind of show what I was talking about. And then, even though this is almost live and I say I don't edit, if I look at the video and it's clear, if that's what happened right there, I'll take a clip and I'll, I'll slow it down just so we can see it. But, like always, of course, keep our pinch nice and tight through the whole process. A few wraps towards the bend of the hook, a few wraps back up to the head. Give that a twist. Take our second color. Measure to make sure they're the same length. Switch my grip nice and tight. A few wraps towards the bend of the hook and then back up to the head. Nice collar. Nice and compact. So here's where I'm talking. So I've wrapped down about halfway then back up to the head go back down about a third back up to the head this is the part I'm talking about so I pull out my bobbin to give myself some slack and I cut it so now I grab my tag end and I still have tension between my left hand and the vise can't really see it but this is nice and taut I actually have my finger resting against the vise Take my tag end, put it up through, nice and taut, still, right, taut. I rest my finger on the head of the jig just to keep it stationary. When I pull it through, it's now underneath, which you probably can't see from your angle, but it's underneath, about halfway underneath the collar. And I think at this point I let go here. So as I was pulling, see how this kind of, the, the tag end kind of shakes, um, you know, just from as you're pulling it through and, and it bounces all over the place. I, it's possible that that last, that last collar we did this to, it just got a loop. What it does is it twists like so and then there's kind of a loop that's in the way um, and why it got stuck. So I think that's what happened if, like I said, if we can see that, I will actually take that clip and slow it down just a little bit. But I don't force it. When I feel the thread get, get caught up like that, you know, there's no reason to, to force it through the collar. Um, like I said, it, it could mess up your collar just a little bit. So why chance it? That's why, you know, just give it a little snip. And uh, pull it through, you know, taking your time, pulling it through that way. So what do we got? About 45 minutes. I think that's going to do it for us today. So hope hope uh, we had something interesting there, right? Just chatting away. Um, do have some upcoming video ideas. Um, 
talking to an old tire uh, yesterday, uh, he brought up a guy that I actually uh, knew about, uh, was friends with my dad, probably one of the top three tires I have ever met. He was an old timer when I was a teenager. Um, and I'm searching for the jig that uh, he gave me. He, he actually would buy heads for my dad and he would tie uh, the one eighth and one quarter football heads uh, for perch. But he would put five colors uh, using calf tail on these jigs. I'm trying to find, I do have one that, that as he was showing me, he actually gave me the jig. I've cherished it all these years. Um, was very grateful for him taking the time and actually teaching me something uh, back when I was just a kid. So if I can find that jig, we're going to sit and uh, do, you know, try to do our best to tie something that uh, would make him proud if he was still around. But uh, like I said, one of my top, probably the top, easily top three, one of the top three jig tires I've ever had uh, the pleasure of sitting with um, and tying. So um, have, haven't been a whole lot of guys over the years. Some guys you meet, um, very talented. Same with fly tying. I've been fortunate. There's a couple fly tires that I've had the pleasure of um, sitting with, sitting around a table with, and tying and talking and learning. Um, even even now, um, I, I don't consider myself... Um, I might know a fair amount, I guess, but I'm always trying to learn something. There's always something you can learn, um, especially sitting around a table with other tires um, is probably the best best thing ever. So, um, but I think that's going to do it for us today. Um, well, next video, I'll try to have a better list of other new videos um, that I have in the works. Um, but we talked about a couple of them here today. If you have any uh, ideas for videos, put that down below. I, I do get every couple uh, videos we put out, a lot of good recommendations. I have notes here on my table. Here's, all right, so these are all filled with uh, different ideas, things that people have asked for. Um, I kind of keep them handy. Sometimes I sit down to specifically address something from uh, a request or a question or recommendation. And sometimes I, I have these here. So as, uh, as it happens during uh, recording, if it, you know, it reminds me, oh, we're actually doing something right here that somebody had asked about. Um, and I can kind of throw it in, but that's my process, right? But I think that's going to do it for us today. So until next time, guys, keep tying in tight lines. I messed up pushing the buttons for the ending. I don't know why Stream Deck makes you... I don't know why Stream Deck doesn't allow if I push a button and it plays the ending, let's say, from start to finish and then goes to black, why I can't just push that button again and have it replay. But you can't do that. So until next time, guys, keep tying tight lines.